Hello, welcome to Room 5. My name's Robert and I'm here today to talk about Greenpeace and other campaign groups. I was involved personally in Greenpeace for over 13 years. My role was as a legal support campaigner. This role involved me taking part in direct actions. A direct action is where Greenpeace will organise an actual action against a corporation or government which will normally be breaking the law. So my role within Greenpeace was to support activists who got in trouble with the law. Now, a non-violent direct action is non-violent in nature, but it does involve doing things which will make a point. For example, a photo opportunity. Photo opportunities are when we do a campaign in order to communicate a message to the public. This will normally involve scaling a building, putting a banner across the top, for example, on the top of a corporation's headquarters, and normally causing a lot of trouble. We will also blockade entrances to the actual headquarters. We will block roads, if necessary, dress up in daft animal suits, and do anything to get the media's attention. Once we have the media's attention, who we always call beforehand, they will come, take pictures, and have our message broadcast across the UK. Another, another way we use, or another method we use, is to use our ships. Greenpeace has a huge fleet of ships, big and small, and this can be used in several ways. For example, we would use go in battle formation down a, a river like the Medway, for example, in London, and we would approach massive power stations if we had problems with the power companies. The ships are also used across the world to help combat overfishing and other marine issues. My role in Devon was primarily to help coordinate, provide materials, provide information, give the activists all the knowledge that they needed in order to successfully communicate, discuss and give information to the public. Greenpeace never ever finished a campaign until the corporation changed its ways. So we would stand outside supermarkets for a year at a time, dressed up as fishmongers. We would also do other types of actions which were not directly involved in Greenpeace, but which were helped through Greenpeace. For example, in the third runway at Heathrow, we prevented the planning permission being sought by really and truly stopping the airport several times and using other tactics, for example, setting up fake ticket booths to give people free train tickets so they wouldn't fly internally in the UK, and generally really annoying the aircraft companies. For people to get involved, it's not easy. There's a lot of training, there's a lot of learning, and the people involved in the actions are not there without any help. They're always provided with the necessary information. They're always given the necessary warnings because doing campaigning isn't necessarily good for your career. Finally, one point I want to give across is that Greenpeace, unbelievably, has the largest army of people outside government armies. So if there is a major environmental problem, the people are there to be mobilised. And Greenpeace are an army in themselves, although an army of people who aren't funded by governments or corporations. Thank you for watching Room 5.